Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Hemostemics Inc., a World Economic Forum Technology Pioneer Award winner that is listed on the Frankfurt, Toronto, and is uplisting to the OTCQB market this quarter. I will make forward-looking information statements to give you a sense of our business, the scaling of our manufacturing processes, the near and longer term outlooks. And as with any forward-looking information, the actual results and performance may differ from that presented today. However, I wanna give you a sense of why we are passionate about our technology and its promise. Hemostemic's first product candidate is ACP01, an angiogenic cell precursor that is patented, been used as a treatment of more than 500 compassionate cases of ischemia, ischemia being a shortage of blood supply to tissues in the circulatory system. And ACP is the subject of a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled clinical trial. We will discuss in detail the interim trial results and the published literature of clinical outcomes in critical limb ischemia, angina, ischemic and dilated cardiomyopathy, and COPD to demonstrate that we are truly a data-driven technology company. Very early on, we recognized that scaling the platform through automation of the production process was the key to address the 5 million limbs that are being amputated globally each year. To that end, we hired an engineering firm and completed a feasibility analysis, and that led to our automation patent. This is critical given that ACP addresses more than five conditions of ischemia, including critical limb ischemia and peripheral arterial disease, which is what most diabetics end up suffering from, angina, ischemic and dilated cardiomyopathy, and idiopathic pulmonary hypertension. Scaling to go from one to 100 to 1,000 to 10,000 batches a week licensing of sales and distribution in jurisdictions where phase two results are sufficient is why we want you to become a shareholder and investor today. While more than 500 patients have been treated on a compassionate basis, 245 are the subjects of various studies. And I'll take you through these study results to give you an understanding of the complete safety profile of ACP and the reported efficacy by indication. Our clinical development pipeline is robust with no less than nine targeted indications, most of which have been treated compassionately with significant success. Neuronal cell precursors and bone cell precursors, like angiogenic cell precursors, are published in the British Journal of Hematology and patented. This makes hemostemics truly a platform of patients' blood-derived stem cells that can be targeted to treat multiple medical conditions as we age. How do we obtain the stem cells? And what does the uh, patient obtain? We patented a synergetic cell population that is generated from the patient's blood, which is drawn like a blood draw, like a blood donation. We, uh, we take peripheral blood mononuclear cells that are isolated using a FICOL gradient first and then subjected to a second density-based enrichment step. Following culturing, this creates a uniquely stable product that has a shelf life of more than 35 hours that enables shipment in ready-to-use syringes globally. There are a multiple of near-term catalysts anticipated in 2021 and 2022, including the Ascent Limb Preservation Conference later this month, the Sir Anthony Rotozo Annual Family Office Investment Conference at the beginning of July, the Amputation Prevention Symposium in August, the ARMS Cell and Gene Meeting in October, the Symposium on Advanced Wound Care in late October, and of course, we have the release of our phase two trial results expected midsummer. We will uh, announce a phase two B or phase three trial following that and additions to our management team, licensing and M&A activity in the near future. Critical limb ischemia and peripheral arterial disease are a major global health problem. There are more than 5 million amputations each year. One million, 1 million subjects treated by hemostemics 
is a $25 billion annual reoccurring market. As we know, cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death. Does it make sense to use your stem cells to heal yourself from these conditions? We think so. This is one reason why regenerative medicine is gaining support in the financial and political spheres. For example, the right to try legislation in the USA enables individuals to use their stem cells to save their limb from amputation while we obtain regulatory approval. Aging populations recognize that the quality of life is the key to its enjoyment. Autologous stem cells, stem cells that come from your own blood, hold the promise to maintain a fantastic quality of life as we age. The key differentiators of angiogenic cell precursors as compared to bone marrow and other tissue derived stem cells are the following. It's autologous, meaning it comes from your own body as compared to allogeneic coming from a donor. There are very low patient risks because these are your own cells. It's a very simple protocol that is easy to perform in an outpatient clinic. There have been no safety issues reported whatsoever. There are no mobilization drugs that are required to stimulate cell production before it is collected. The process is scalable, centralizable, leverageable as a platform of many stem cell lineages to treat multiple conditions as we age. We have a very high cell viability with fresh cells in ready to use syringes that can ship anywhere in the world in 35 hours. The markets for ACP are very large and expected to grow as the population ages. As mentioned, saving a million limbs each year is a $25 billion reoccurring market for hemostemics. Scaling that business will increase volume and margin, decrease cost, and achieve a true breakthrough in the treatment of ischemia in the limbs, heart, lungs, and other circulatory dependent systems. Truly, at scale, our company's vision is to be the Amazon equivalent in the production of autologous stem cells. It's not a question of if. This is simply a question of who has the patents, management, financing, and vision to implement this business plan. In the clinic, ACP has been completely safe. Why? Well, it's because we are extracting and enriching the patient cell population. Because they are the patient's cells, they use the body's natural electrical and chemical signaling processes to home to the site of need, embed at the site of need, and create angiogenesis at the site of need. They work. Note in 47 days how this toe and foot healed after the treatment with angiogenic cell precursors. Also note the improvement in general circulation. I will go into more detail in the next few slides, but I want you to keep this image in your mind when I read the results that follow. The FDA and Health Canada have approved our clinical trial. We are in the final stages of our phase two. The 65th patient has had its last follow-up. We are completing source document verification, a database cleanse before locking the database and completing the statistical analyses. ACPs are generated from 250 cc's of blood, which is drawn very much like a blood donation at the physician's office. The blood is shipped to hemostemics in a temperature controlled cooler. In the space of five days, we fractionate it into the synergetic cell population, culture it into approximately 200 million angiogenic cell precursors, and then ship the 200 million cells in ready to use syringes back to the patient's doctor. If he's a vascular surgeon and treating critical limb ischemia, he injects the cells in 20 locations around the wound. If it's a cardiologist, he does a femoral artery approach into the heart and injects the cells into the ischemic tissue of the heart. If he's a thoracic surgeon doing open heart surgery, he injects the cells while uh, doing open heart surgery before he closes the patient up. As mentioned, this is done in the heart the lungs, the toes, the feet, the legs, with significant clinical outcomes. Our study was started and approved by the FDA in 2017 and approved by Health Canada in 2018. The first patient enrolled commenced in Q3 2018, and we last patient finished enrollment in Q4 2019. 
And our expectation is that this trial safety profile will open the door for other trials of ACP. So let's look at the published studies. The first study assessed ACP in six critical limb ischemia patients. Five of six saved their limb from amputation. The second study randomized 20 patients with critical limb ischemia. 10 received ACP and 10 received a placebo. There were no deaths and seven of 10 saved their limb from amputation in the treated group. There were two deaths and six of eight lost their limb to amputation in the placebo group. The third study is a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial. The University of British Columbia's Dr. York Shang reported the following interim results to the 41st meeting of vascular surgeons in Kelowna, BC, namely that 83% of patients that he treated experienced healing of ulcers and resolution of ischemic rest pain and saved their limb from amputation. These outcomes were maintained, he noted, for four and a half years. We've also treated angina. We have a 24 patient angina trial. 24 patients were enrolled and treated with ACP and assessed at one, three, and six months post-treatment. 20 patients completed follow-up at three months, 17 completed follow-up at six months. The six minute walk test improved from 333 meters to 413 meters at six months. Exercise capacity increased from 5.62 to 6.73 metabolic equivalents at three months and increased to 7.09 metabolic equivalents at six months. The mean Canadian cardiovascular score decreased one whole class from 2.1 to 1.18 at six months. While one patient died due to a heart attack about two weeks after treatment, it was unrelated. A coronary, angio a coronary angiography demonstrated an occlusion in an untreated artery and patency of the ACP treated artery. I mentioned the heart studies. There are two very interesting publications. One of 106 patients who averaged 66 years of age, who were NYHA functional class three or four, who had poor left ventricle function and who typically had a previous heart attack and two comorbidities. These patients had exhausted all surgical, all medical, and all pharmaceutical options. At one year follow-up, functional class improved one whole class according to their physicians. Left ventricle ejection fraction improved from 34% to 39%. The quality of life survey revealed that general health and physical functioning were significantly improved. Roger Burgesson, patient number 35, a co-founder of this company and my very good friend uh, is someone I know personally who was given six months to live in November 2005. His ejection and fraction improved from 18% to 30% where it stabilized. He gained a quality of life he thought he lost forever and enjoyed another 14 and a half years of life, of family, and he watched his grandchildren grow up and graduate from university. Peter Lacey is the chairman of our company. Peter is the chairman of Service Corporation, a company he built from one John Deere dealership to 64 company-owned stores doing greater than $1.2 billion in revenue. Peter has uh, $3.7 million invested in our equity. Ronnie Hirschman is an independent director and an esteemed cardiologist from Long Island, New York. He invested $1.2 million when he observed how well the patients, heart patients did following treatment of ACP. Lauren Swanberg of the Swanberg Brothers Family Office is an independent director. He's invested $1.2 million. I'm a co-founder who ran the company for the first five years and who returned to the company after being away for 10 years. I've led the rescue of the company in late 2019, and I created an independent board of advisors that is capable of advising the, the company, the management team, and the board of directors in terms of how to grow globally. On the board of advisors is Tim Chang. He's a former managing director of private equity investments at Cerebus and AIG in Hong Kong. David Sibushi is the former Solicitor General of Ontario. And the Honourable Sheila Copps is a former Deputy Prime Minister of Canada. 
Our, our experienced leadership team includes the scientific advisory board that is led by Dr. York Zhang, I mentioned earlier. Dr. Pierre Leimgruber is our chief medical officer. He is Roger Burgesson's um, cardiologist. And Alan Lumsden, Norman Wong, and Dr. Kumar Hari is a PhD. Uh, he's a PhD in cell biology at the University of California, Davis. We have 56 million shares issued, uh, 39 million warrants extant, uh, priced, uh, re, priced at 55 cents. They bring in approximately $22 million of financing. We are well published. I welcome you and invite you to become a shareholder in the open market or an investor via private placement. And with that, uh, Gilbert, I open to questions. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, and uh, here for the first question coming from, uh, from Bert, uh, he's asking what are the major shareholders of the company right now? Yes, so the management team and the board own uh, approximately 20% of the company. And uh, Glenn is the next question. And uh, when will Hemostamix start uh, generating revenue? That we so we can generate revenue from license agreements and from the treatment of compassionate cases following phase two results. We were actually in revenue in the first, when I ran the company for, uh, as a private company during the first five years, we were generating uh, revenues of about uh, $200,000 a month. So we, we, can, we can get back to revenue and we will do that in following the phase two uh, results. And I would expect first revenues to be approximately 12 months out. Right. And the next one coming from Sarah here, she's asking, since autonomous cell therapy is intrinsically no, low in volume, so how do you plan to scale it up uh, in the high volume way? Absolutely. And that, that we recognized uh, very early on. We retained an engineering firm, did a feasibility analysis of scaling our production process. The engineer that completed that feasibility analysis is uh, ready to rejoin the company. Uh, and we are going to do it through automation of the production process. So fractionating is not a, uh, it can be automated. Culturing is automated. Harvesting is the, is the last piece of the puzzle. And for that, we're going to use AI. And, um, and you know, we're here in Southwestern Ontario next to the University of Waterloo. We have uh, some of the best AI in the world um, that we are going to incorporate into the pro production process. So here's the last question, a couple of this uh, asking it as uh, the same one here. He's asking, do you have any uh, competitors in the space, uh, meaning in the uh, ischemia or disease that space? Yes, so there, there are other companies uh, trying to treat critical limb ischemia. They either use a donor-based cell product or, uh, uh, and, and that has not worked, or they're using a, um, an autologous-based cell product, and that um, has been proven to be tricky. Uh, and so, you know, Pluristem is one, one example of a company that would be a competitor of ours in the, uh, in this, in this space. Okay. Thank you, Thomas, for sharing about, uh, the hemostamics potential with us here today. My pleasure, Gilbert.